Hey guys, um, welcome back to another episode of Dream Daddy. <laughs> I think we're on episode nine, <laughs> question mark? Maybe? I'm not sure. Shit. Oh well. Oh well. <laughs> Anyways, um, we broke a gargoyle and we're back now though. We're gonna do this. We got this. Okay. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> Woo. That was a close one. Uh-oh, here comes Damien. He looks upset. Ah! Joker, my sincerest apologies to have kept you waiting. There's an urgent matter that I must attend to, so I'm afraid I must ask. I must take my leave. No problem, dude. Everything all right? Damien worries the hem of his coat with his fingers and looks away. Everything is perfectly fine, but I, uh, it's Lucian. What's wrong? He appears to have, well... His teacher needs me to come to the school. Post haste. Do you need help? Mm. Oh no, you don't have to. Let me come with you. Us dads gotta stick together. Mm. You're right. This is one of Lucien's more elaborate stunts. I would greatly treasure having another parent by my side. Let's go. I love how I gave him like a British accent. Mm. <laughs> I gave both of them British accents. Or like English. I don't know. I'm good. <laughs> Damien and I walk into the school and are immediately greeted by an anxious looking Hugo. <sighs> Hi Damien, you're here you're here me record time. I wouldn't miss it for the world, my dear friend. Wow, what I've heard is it doesn't seem like this is Hugo and Damien's first time with the my kid are in the trouble rodeo. Mm. What is it this time? Oh This Damien you have to say to believe. Damien and I fall step in fall into step behind Hugo, who leads us through the busy corridors of the school. We sat passed by several classes in session, and I vaguely wonder if a man is around. Hugo eventually ushers us into a small boiler room with a flight of rickety stairs leading down into darkness. Watch your step. I can hear faint voices drifting up from the basement, and they don't sound happy. As I lead into the depths of the school, I recall the antics I got into as an angsty middle schooler. At least I had enough sense to stay out of the creepy basements. We find another teacher in the boiling room, tucked away in the back of the basement. With him are Lucien and Ernest, Ugo's son. Lucien has a bloody nose. Thanks for coming. I can't make heads or tails of this. I look around the scene of the crime and see a bunch of bricks and some masonry tools scattered huh. around. What happened in here? Ernest punched me. Lucien tried to kill me. Huh. The room falls silent. I was not trying to kill you, dumbass. I was trying to build a brick wall around you and see what would happen. You promised me there was wine down here. You tricked me. Huh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second. Lucian, did you try to... Cask of... Um, Ernest? <laughs> I'm neither confirming nor denying that. I turned to Damien and whispered to him, What's... Uh, the cask of... Hmm. It's a classical Edgar Allan Poe show story where a man gets his enemy drunk lays him down into the cellar with the promise of wine of fine vintage, then buries him alive behind a brick wall. Huh. It's a lovely story. So wait, Lucian, you tried to do that to him? I was curious to see how it would turn out. I wasn't actually going to leave him there. What was the thought process here? That Ernest is just going to sit still while he slowly built a tomb around him? Well, it worked for like 20 minutes because he's an idiot, but then he realized that I lied about the wine. And you were cackling maniacally. That sort of tipped me off. Ernest, 20 minutes. Dad. Whoa! It took you 20 minutes. Son, we just did an entire two-week unit on the cask of... And it took you 20 minutes to realize Lucien was leading you into an elaborate ruse. Did you even read the story? I read the first five pages and then read a review of the movie. <laughs> what? It's only five pages long, and there is no movie. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I pay Lucien to read it for me. Uh. Actually, he didn't even pay me. So when you think about it, this is me teaching him a lesson. Damien and Ugo both have their heads in their hands. You guys are always telling me to engage in the literature, and I did. And I don't see a problem here. Alright. I'm following this under what the hell. Don't do whatever that was again. You two are both suspended for a week. Ernest and Lucien high five. The teacher starts to stomp up the stairs. Ugo, I'll cover your class. Take your son home. Mr. Bloodmatch, you too. Thank you for the mediation. We 
we all head upstairs and out of the school in tense silence. <laughs> That's some bullshit that I would try, to be honest. Oh, fuck. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Lucien, Damien, and I all pile into my car and begin the drive home. Lucien immediately pull, puts, up, puts his hood up and stares out of the window angrily. I'm not going to therapy again. Hmm. Ah. I know, son. It's entirely up to you whether or not you want to go. But I care about you and I can see that you're struggling. So if you decide that you want, you would like to uh, speak to a professional about your feelings, we can do that too. Huh. Maybe you could spend the next week looking for a summer job. Hmm? I know how much you want your own car. I can't believe Damien's keeping his cool. I'm impressed. Fine. Thanks for not freaking out too hard. Hmm. I love you, son. Hmm. Lucien continues staring out of the window. Love you, too. We spend the rest of the drive in relative silence. The moment we pull into the driveway, Lucien hops out of the car, slams the door, and runs inside. Hmm. I didn't expect to have that conversation in front of you. He and I have a lot we need to work out. It's all right. And all things considered, Lucien's bricklaying was pretty good. So here, there's your silver oh. lining. There is that, yes. Um... You were a lot more diplomatic with him than I would have been. I just want what's best for him. And I don't think yelling at him would do either of us any favors. It rarely does. You're good. Oh, wait. Oh, do the eggplants mean that he wants to fuck me? Maybe? Maybe? I don't know. <laughs> do you oh. want to? It would be my honor and my pleasure. Damien vows to flourish. Classy. <laughs> find Amanda curled up on the couch with a blanket watching TV. I plop down next to her. Yo, what you watching? Tiny House Hunting Brothers Extreme Edition. Ugh, I hate this show. The couple on screen figures back and forth are standing in an extremely small house made of recycled bottles. The Tiny House Hunting Brothers watch them with bemused expressions, both their heads touching the low scene. I told you I wanted a two bed Two bath, shabby chic cottage. This house doesn't even have a bathroom. But honey, the house is only 20 yards away. It's not that bad. I am not po pooping outside, Greg. Why don't they just get a regular size house? Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. Hot afternoon, Tico. It got strange. We had to go to the stool, school to pick up Lucien's and try to. He let Ernest down to the cellar with the promise of a fine vintage and then tried to, break, turn, tried to break him into the role, right? How do you know? Has everyone heard the story except for me? <laughs> Lucien laughs from the entire thing. <laughs> this entire day is beyond me. But otherwise, it was a fun day. That Damien guy's a character, but he's in a really good company. And a surprisingly diplomatic dad. Ah. I dig his style. You know what? Me too. <laughs> oh! was a phenomenal did I date. S on this? Did, I, did I win? Did I win? Okay. Let's see. Darkness I got. Victorian and relaxed dad. <laughs> um. I think I did good. <laughs> yes. Yes. Doing my afternoon world jumbles, I hear the mail truck pull through the cul de sac. I wonder if we got any coupons today. The nice mail person slides a couple letters and a large yellow envelope through the slot. It takes a couple of tries for them to get in. Hey, my coupons. I take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. I lightly knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on. Amanda? She yells through the door. What? I have something for you. I'm kind of busy right now. Can you come back later? Hey, I just thought you want this big old envelope we got from HIA. Yeah. Immediately, Amanda pushes her door open. Horn Institute for the Arts? I mean, if you're busy, I can come <laughs> back. Father, please. I hand her the envelope, which she tears open with her teeth. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> That's probably bad for your teeth. She does, Sid doesn't seem to hear me and spits out a piece of the envelope. She pulls out a letter and folds eh? it, and this is killing me. 
this is her dream school. Oh my god. But if it's an app, if it's a big envelope she got in, like you, you just fucking know that. Amanda's face is unreadable. Mm -hmm. I can't believe this. Oh, honey, it's okay if you didn't. Yeah! I got in! Oh, I got in! Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big hug. Congrats, sweetie, that's amazing. I'm so proud of you. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god, I really can't believe I got in. Well, of course you got in. You're a great student. You nailed that interview, and your photography is incredible. Ah. Wait, Dad. Ah. I know this one's really expensive, and it's so far away. I think for a moment, HIA is one of was one of the more expensive schools that Amanda applied to. I know she had her heart set on it for the longest time. It'll be tough, but we're gonna make it work. Hmm. Really? Of course. Amanda hugs me again. All right. Thanks, Dad. Okay, sweetie, we're celebrating tonight. Dinner, your choice. Wherever you want. We got. Wherever. Whatever. Whatever. Want to be together. Okay. Um, I know I'm ending this a little bit early, but I feel like I'm gonna end up in a really awkward space if I end in like three minutes. So, I'm just gonna end right here. I think I mean most of the episodes are longer anyway, so you're all good. <laughs> Anyways, um, subscribe, leave a comment, like, become a free minion today. I'll see you in the next episode, and uh, cheers!